our senior economist with SPM Professionals, Paul Alaji. He joins me in the studio for more on this discussion. Paul, it's great to have you join Thank us you on the me. show. Uh, it's good to have you in Lagos, not in Abuja today. Now, no, I'm going to start first of all, move to the debt issue with the ongoing UK-Africa summit. Uh, there's always this issue of saying Africa is the place to go. Africa has the potentials. Everything happens in Africa. Africa is the next place to be. What's this thing about Africa? Now, two things. When you hear the word Africa from some headquarters and saying Africa is the way to go, where to go and do what? Is it to maximize and take natural resources, which Africa as a continent understand by now that yes, we have natural resources, but we don't have capacity to transform natural resources to consumables, finished product, mechanized products, etc., etc. So Africa on one hand is looking for those people or organizations or countries that will help the entire continent convert potentials to reality. So you hear a lot of Africa's huge potential but when you look at production possibility frontier of Africa you see that Africa still operate below expectation that on the side or we want we are looking at people who truly will come invest in Africa so I'm happy when I saw um, UK um, Africa investment summit but what, what are they going to be discussing I know several summits that, that I've held in time past where they've discussed how Africa we come maybe borrow money or some we come invest or Africa must buy and the truth is this there is no free lunch anywhere. Even when I visited Freetown, I paid for my meal. Of course. It is not free. Now, this is the point. If Africa will go and talk about debt or financing, Africa will still be the one to pay back. What Africa should rather demand for is this. We have over a million people, a billion people. Who is clothing us? Who is feeding us? Who produces our vehicle? So if more manufacturers of vehicles we come establish in Africa, if truly Africa is the future. Remember, 100 years ago, people said China was the future. 50 years ago, we said China was the future. Is China truly the future because of the reality of what we see today? Yes, we could say that those assertions were correct. Today, when we say Africa is the future, how many of ICT ops are we going to have in Africa, starting with Nigeria, going to Kenya, Rwanda? Where are they going to be? Which modern technology for housing are we going to have? Which vehicle are we going to build? If that is not the conversation we are having in London this moment, we are fooling ourselves. And listen, it is not political leaders that we have the conversation. They are are negotiators of industry, they are captains of industry, because at the end of the day, they are either the receiver of good or the receiver of pain. Uh, I saw some leaders uh, there, I saw the likes of about to their core, I saw some decision makers, government policy guys, all on ground. Now, now all of this at the end of the day is always to increase investments, create jobs and all of that. Nigeria is projected that in the next, by 2050, the population will be double. And many are saying that this is the time to key in to Nigeria, uh, to a country like Nigeria. Now our manufacturing, like you've identified, we are not yet there. What are the things, what should we ask from the UK? What should we ask from international partners like this? Now, what we should ask for the UK are the basic thing that we cannot produce ourselves and we cannot generate sufficiently enough. One of them is power. UK is one of the countries when it comes to regular power supply and great, great organization that have gotten power correctly. How will Nigeria partner with UK in this regard? That will make sense. But if you are partnering with UK and it has to still deal with debt and borrowings, I'm afraid we will be able to solve some problem on the immediate, but we still have to pay for them in the long run. So issues around education. The truth is that Nigeria spent a lot of money, trillions of naira, to import education. And the recipient of the, most of this importation is United Kingdom. Almost everybody wants to school abroad, particularly for first degree or second degree, as the case may be. And the country of choice for most people okay. is not in the United States, it's the United Kingdom. So when you look at naira to dollar conversion, from naira to pounds, I beg your pardon, or maybe going to dollar at first, uh, for Nigerians that want to school, an entire African continent that want to school abroad, particularly in the UK, what again is UK buying from African countries? What is UK buying from Nigeria? So negotiation is, is, is the issue now. The question now is that what do we have that UK 
also needs. So if you don't have what UK needs apart from our hoy, yeah, it's not going to be a win-win situation. The question is it will not be win-win situation. So how will UK now, if this is where our government and, and leaders and drivers of African continent needs to be smart. What are we going to do such that those, with those things we have capacity to produce but we are not producing, UK can now support, maybe it's textiles for instance, what support do we need from UK so that textiles guy will fly and we export not just sell to Nigerians but export to the rest of Africa or export to outside countries. The painful thing is, there is that UK will understand that with, it, with dependence come um, shortage of uh, exports for them. Mabaki, UK this time have no option. If African negotiators are smart, it's leaving EU exactly. very the soon. Exactly, Brexit issue and EU, all of EU that. EU very soon. When it comes to competing with China and Japan, it's not so strong as that. It also could not compete with America. The countries that he has colonized, meaningful part of the population, in fact, the largest population in the continent is Africa. He may now be looking backward. In business, we call it backward integration. If <laughs> Africa does not negotiate well, the truth is that Africa may just be faced with, quote and unquote, neocolonialization. Okay, before we move to the debt issue, which is very, very important, uh, I, I saw some state governors. I saw Baba Jide Sonwulu of Lagos, also Dakwa Biodo of Ogun State, and um, I, I saw them talking about what they also need to do to also strengthen their states. Now, looking at the states, what impact do you see gathering like this having on state governments, maybe helping them rearrange just themselves, particularly at this time where all of them need to generate more revenue? The revenue base remains very low. Now, the, the, the truth is that revenue re base remains very low because hybrid Nigeria is very poor. Now, monies for revenue will not come, no, uh, it will not come significantly from abroad. Revenue generation will come from within. Mm -hmm. So when you look at um, capacity to earn income within Nigeria, we have tried to elevate poverty without paying conscious efforts to making people more prosperous. There are two different things in economics. It's one thing to want to elevate poverty or, or to want people to come out of poverty. Laudable thing to do. But we must deliberately also make policy for people to see more opportunity and become more prosperous. Make the environment more more competitive. We will not build wealth around getting government contract and civil service. They are bubbles that can burst at any time. So, but when we create sustainable em 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 environment, that's when we. And when you see Lagos State and Ogun State, the truth is, when it comes to industrial zone in Nigeria, Lagos Ogun remains major industrial zone. For the south, and you see, the, uh, when you analyze the entire country, industrial zone of the entire country is in the south, and major industrial belt of the south is in Lagos. And by extension to Ogun State, because remember, Lagos, I mean, Ogun, totally I mean, encapsulate Lagos. So you can't do so much if those two states are not functional. And yeah. the truth is that, and this is the prediction we've given before, if you want to boost Nigerian GDP by not less than 20%, Ensure you bring means of transportation to Lagos that can ease traffic. What it means is that more than 20 million people will become more productive. Economic of La economy of Lagos will boost more. And you're going to have new economics in March. Remember, with consumption tax, which of course, part of which is VAT, which they give you the highest. When you, com when you combine the whole of VAT in North Central, not when you remove SCT, North Central, North East, North West, combine all of them together. Only Lagos State gives more than these three regions together. So we it make economic sense that we solve challenges for such a, in terms of movement of people, people and goods, so that when that state gets, we can even generate more Fun. because it is not 100% of what is generated by that state that goes to the state. 50% goes to the state, another 35% um, goes to local government within the state, then 15% goes to the federal government, part of which may see get to the table of some states. <laughs> now let's move to debt issues now. We started talking about that money. So let's go to the debt issue now from about 12.1 trillion uh, Naira uh, as at June 2015. Now we stand at about 26 trillion Naira. Uh, this is worrisome. The argument of saying, what do we borrow for? What do we use these funds for? Comes in again. I don't know how that comes to you. Now, now this is it. You know, you cannot clap with one hand. I remember in 20, I know we're going to get to this conversation. Um, I was saying it in 2016, 2017, when some person said the best thing for us to do is to devalue our currency. Now, when you devalue, it will appear to you that one barrel of crude oil per dollar will make, give you more money. What you don't understand, what we did not understand then is that our debt in dollar has also been devalued. It now becomes more in dollar terms. So we added approximately 8 trillion naira by borrowing no money. See 
simply because of our decision to devalue currency in 2016-2017 from 199 to 305 or properly speaking 360 as the case may be but of course let's go with CBN figures of 305 that policy alone led to approximately a trillion it can be less than a five trillion naira, but approximately a trillion naira is what or is what we had in figures now remove that from about 12 trillion what have we borrowed for there are good reasons why countries borrow and there could be bad reasons why country borrow it is good when you borrow for investment and what do you mean by investment total money borrowed is going directly into capital expenditure not just for federal government because debt figure is not just for federal government but for federal and state and meaningful part meaningful chunk of the borrowing is also going into um, say capital expenditure of state and if and indeed local government but it becomes bad borrowing when you are borrowing in order to finance recurrent expenditure it may be uh, say so salaries. Uh, salaries it may be um, entitlement and all of that for people those are not good reasons to borrow but economic speaking and generally speaking there is what we call necessary condition and sufficient condition and it's important we put it out there because most people that have spoken about Nigeria that have dwelled so much on necessary condition but not sufficient condition. It is necessary first when you look at your debt to GDP and you are less than 50 to 70 percent. Nigeria passed that because we are less than 30 percent, so that is good. Now it is not going to be sufficient if you don't pass the second and the third condition. The second condition is that your revenue generation that debt service to revenue must not have significant impact as i talked to you between 30 cob of every one naira to about 50 cob of every naira, depending on which figure you are using are using a national figure you are using at the federal government figure which means for every hundred naira federal gov i mean government and 50 naira is spent to fund this debt that is not good decision because the 50 naira could have been used to connect uh, say abuja to kano it can be used to run part of our rail system good job that we are doing right now the last condition which is the most important condition which makes it necessary is that your rate of debt collection must be lower than economic growth. Now, if you look at the average of five years you've mentioned, rate of debt collection is 15 percent, economy have grown, average of two percent. Whether we are good or bad, but mark you, it should not be close, it should be lower. But 15 percent to two percent, that is why it's as if all the money we borrow, you'll be finding, you'll be looking for touchlight to see where we spend them. It is not that we did not spend them. It is just that the economic growth is yeah, slower, slower compared to debt. Slower. And that is why, you see, I can give you an answer of where we spent. Sukuk bond, well, the money was spent directly on Abuja, Lokoja yeah. Expressway. Yeah. But when you look go there now, the road condition, the number, number of vehicles using the road, at part time, you will be, it, it will be very convenient for you to forget because job, job, job is a song that should be on the lips of every Nigerian in order for us to bring the country that we all desire to live in, countries that you will choose not to go anywhere again to spend your holidays, but to remain in Nigeria. Paul, but if the infrastructure is not there, I'm afraid we may not just Paul, get it. Paul, total debt as a percentage of gross domestic product, uh, at about, that was at about 18.47%. That's what the minister is saying. And the DG, as of September 2019, now, they are, the argument is that this is still within threshold of 25%. And they're saying that Nigeria seems to be doing well. According, I just mentioned it, that there is what we call necessary condition. Okay. I clap for that. But okay. when it comes to sufficient, you don't make decision on what is necessary. Yeah. Your reasons must be sufficient. Condition number two, what is revenue? You know, the, 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 the DG just said that one of the reasons why debt jumped was because of poor revenue. Poor revenue. revenue. So yeah. you, you've not solved that, which makes you sufficient. Yeah, that's the finance bill might approve, address that as we Finance bill, we address it to some extent. Mark you, the new finance bill, the good news about it is that company between zero to <laughs> 25 million turnover, we, not, we not pay tax. 25 million to 100 million, we pay 20%. Mark you, it is reduced revenue for government. Reduced revenue for government because right now they are paying 30%. It's reduced revenue. Now, where everybody has spoken about is VAT. VAT. Federal government only get 25%. Let us assume that federal government will get 100%. Let me take you to 2019 budget. VAT was responsible for only 3.3%. So even if it is 100% federal government will get, it will only increase to 6.6%. It is so insignificant. It is so microscopic. But if they are getting it from petroleum profit tax or excite duty, making local business to be more competitive, then we can say we have solved the problem. But don't worry, 2021 is almost here. Then we can compare our notes and see that the real issue is revenue generation. But the method is not being innovative enough 
in generating revenue. Before we round this up, before we round this up, let's talk about gen revenue generation now. A lot of means to be diverse by government. We see diversification. We see the economic recovery and growth plan. We see all of the moves by FRS and all other agencies of government. Not just FRS this time. All agencies are trying to make more fun. Customs, mention it. Everybody is trying to make more money. What do you think? Where do we go from here? Money to do, do you what? See? Money to do what? For infrastructure. infrastructure. Use private sector to build it. I've not seen one country, including UK, that is having a meeting with African countries. The one that says is the economy will grow by 8% in 2020. Nigeria is projecting 2.87% for 2020. Rwanda is projecting 8%. You know why? Because Rwanda understood that it could not deploy infrastructure, brought private sector, both local and foreign, to build. If you go to China, go to Turkey, go to Rwanda, you see a lot of foreigners coming to build infrastructure. We are getting it like a rail system because those building it, they are foreigners. The, the, the good news is that when you have more and more local and, local and foreign individuals building, a Papa Expressway today is being built by right. private sector. Look at the condition of that road. Without, they've not completed it, but snap it and snap it. Anyone, any I state drove, government, I drove past the anyone any state government is doing. Can you compare the no. two? Because the purpose for private sector is what will facilitate my profit. Hmm. When this road is good, hmm. it's not going to be get damaged in 20, yeah, 30 years. Yeah. But public sector might not doing that. It's a social good. Social good and profit, they are two different energies. One energy can whistle out any moment from now, but the other energy is long, is lasting. And that is why government should think beyond revenue generation uh, it is very important, but to build infrastructure, you need more of private sector, you need of more of public-private partnership for you to build it. UK did it, US did it, Italy has done it, United Arab Emirates, particularly Dubai City, Chaja, and Abu Dhabi did it. We have countries, now Rwanda has done it, 8% GDP growth rate. We cannot say because Nigeria is unique, we have big population. I will tell you there are countries with big population. China is bigger than you are. Landmass is bigger than you are, but did not build all the infrastructure. He also used public-private private partnership. partnership. We can't hide from it, it's the way to go. Let's, let's leave it at that note. Public-private partnership, the way to go. Paul Alaje, a senior economist, SPM professionals, thank you very much. It's always nice having you on Business Nigeria. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for your me. time. Thank you so much for having me.